So now we continue the ordinal approach. Now let us look at welfare theory, how you divide money fairly over different people and make everybody as happy as possible, utilitarianism. And we're going to discuss, I'm going to present you a famous theorem by Hassanji, a theory that caused a lot of confusion, indignification, amazement. Well, you will see, it's an amazing result. So here we look at the situation where uh, prospects, the things to choose from, are, well, social states. So the situation for the country in the Netherlands, for instance. And we'll also allow risk to be there. There is uncertainty. So prohibit the distribution over social states. But now in welfare theory, many people are involved. We assume that a, a, a number of aging, maybe if this is Dutch population, it's like 17 million or so. And all these agents, these individuals have their own preference over the social states, what they prefer most that the situation of the country will be. The task is now how to combine all these opinions, making everybody as happy as possible. We're going to assume that so the preferences of all the individuals are indexed by their number. Agent three has preference uh, so three, index three. We assume there's a social planner who is taking decisions for society, maybe it's government or something. And we're going to assume the social planner is benevolent, no self-interest. The only thing that we care about is how can we do the best for all people together? So make as many people as possible, as happy as possible. How can we aggregate those individual preferences into a social preference in a good manner? What are good ways to do it? We assume, I told you already, risk is involved. Let us assume that all the preferences of all the individuals and also of the social planner maximize expected utility. And these are the utility function of every individual agent over the social states. This is the resulting utility function of the social planner uh, coming. So of course, that capital U, we have to combine the small use in a good way. Let's assume greater optimality. It will be the most uncontroversial condition that you can think of. It says, imagine social state X and Y, and everybody in the country all the 17 million Dutch people prefer X to Y. This is not just majority, this is unanimity. Well, then the social planner should prefer X to Y. Probably you can't think of a less uh, convincing, this is the most convincing condition and the most innocuous condition you ever saw. So nothing can be implied by it. But then her son, he surprised the whole world by the following theorem. He said, assuming some uh, things, uh, technical things we ignore for now, he showed utilitarianism will be implied by that condition. Let me define utilitarian first. He says, in the utilitarianist model, the social planner looks at all the individual the utilities of all those agents then takes some of those well weighted sum. A G is the weight, the importance or whatever of uh, individual J in society. So it's a weighted mixture of the individual utilities that society will maximize. That's utilitarianism. As so you said, it's an interesting model. It's a bit weird because the model treats every in the utility as singular and is not impacted by others. So you'll see more about what is strange about it. But at first it looks like a rather, well, you see immediately it's a rather restricted model. It has separability, you know, it's just summing this thing, not multiplying or anything. And only you take the weighted sum, the importance of every individual, a rather peculiar model. You immediately have that feeling. Now, theorem of Hassanji, hold your heart. He says, this approach, utilitarianism, holds if and only if we have these conditions I said, EU for everybody, and Pareto optimality. That's it. These conditions are necessary and sufficient for those conditions. Now, that feels immediately weird because these conditions seem to be completely unobjectionable. This is seen already to be a peculiar model. So you already feel there's something weird going on. 
I'll give you an example to give more insights into uh, the situation. But it's a bit weird where there's no interaction between agents going on. You know? uh, every agent is just happy for its own utility, it doesn't care about the utility of the others. It feels a bit strange. There's no equity consideration. I'm going to explain it next. So many people were surprised about this theorem holding true, couldn't understand, but also people objected to it and said, it's not a good model. These conditions are not as good as they seem. And uh, if, for instance, uh, whether somebody is rich or poor, doesn't seem to matter in that model, because the same weight is for agent, whether the agent is rich or poor, it's, it looks weird. And the, one of the main objections put forward, I immediately present here, Here's an example of something that people don't like. Imagine here 50-50 between this social state and that social state. Here, everybody happy, utility one. So a society of only two persons here. Here, everybody unhappy. Here's a situation, 50-50, two social states, but always in one, one of the agents is happy, the other is not happy. Here we have always perfect equality. Here we have always inequality. And many people, well, According to the Hassanji theorem, these two should be equivalent because here the expected utility of agent one is half and of agent two is also half. But here, agent one has the same half expected utility as there, and agent two also has the same half expected utility as there. So for both agents as individuals considered, the left and the right uh, social state are equally good. So by parade optimality, they should be equally good. And also if you calculate utilitarian, of course, the numbers are all the same. You get the same thing. Many people say this is really not the same. We think uh, equity considerations come in. Because here, always fairness, everybody equal. Here, always unfairness. Here, jealousy may come in. For instance, uh, you know, two figures, like with children, if one has ice cream, the other doesn't, the other will be unhappy about it. So people said, these situations are not equivalent. Vasanji's model is not reasonable here. His Pareto optimality is not a reasonable condition. Well, Vasanji could counter to this argument. There were many debates, I will not start all of them, but a bit. So when people objected for this example, Vasanji could counter, he said, if this is the case, if in this right situation there's inequality in society and people like her are unhappy, then you didn't capture utility right. Then here the utilities are lower than there. So you should incorporate that into your utility function if there is unhappiness due to unfairness. You just, you mismodel utility. That's how I said you could defend against this example. But people could follow up. They could say, well, Mr. Hassanji, you are taking utility in a circular manner. Whenever we have a counter example, you say utility should be redefined. Your utility function should apparently capture everything that ever happens everywhere in society. If you want to know the utility of person number one, you have to know every situation of everybody in society so to capture all the fairness, consider whatever. Your model becomes circular and completely intractable from it. And then, Hassan, you maybe could counter to that. And uh, I don't know more of the discussion. I cannot go to the end, but many debates were here. But surely it's a bit of a miraculous theorem. If you see that rate of humanity, and then you see how much it implies, how can something as unobjectional as rate of humanity throw equality consideration out the windows? It's always a bit mysterious. So that was the theorem of Hassanji. But it, it has been used in utilitarianism uh, discussions, and many people think in uh, welfare uh, evaluation we should reckon with equity. Many models exist about it, but then this course is broad, not deep. So I'll just show you this first basic theorem that stood up the hope field and started many debates. Further results for the ordinal approach. There were many other. So I've so far I've been always showing you nice theorem that work well. So positive result for this uh, ordinal approach to economics. There are other beautiful results that so that the ordinal approach built up a strong building for economics. For instance, there was a famous Nash 1950 paper. He proved that in all strategic situations, no matter how complex, always there exists equilibrium. He got a Nobel Prize for that. And De Breu 
he proved that if you have an all kind of market uh, things going on, so, uh, buyers, sellers, prices, all these things, always in market models and equilibrium will exist. And also using ordinal tools in a way. So these were beautiful results. Invisible hand of Adams was formalized here. Always the market itself find equilibrium prices and everything functions. Demand meets supply. It's really miraculous, beautiful. So beautiful results. And the Bre also got a Nobel Prize for it. So the many good results have come from the ordinal approach. But now we turn to chapter two. And then all kinds of problems started coming, especially empirical problems that will be the next recording.